Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this finally Friday, uh, May 26, 2023. It's about 11.40 a.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. And the latest earthquake on the globe shows, uh, looks like a 1.5 over here in California. Also a 3.0 down into the South America region. Uh, looking at earthquake activity overnight, uh, we did see things kind of ramp up here across the area of Japan, uh, just off the coast here of Tokyo. Uh, they did see a 6.1 earthquake, 44 kilometers deep, followed up by a couple other aftershocks here in the vicinity of the uh, Japan Trench. Kind of a little uptick taking place there. I uh, did uh, come in about, uh, it was pretty early this morning, about 3 o'clock or so, and the... Uh, I'm sure quite a few folks around the Tokyo area did report feeling that quake, uh, mostly light, uh, maybe some moderate shaking being reported out there overnight with that six pointer. Also got some activity ramping up here well across the Pacific here in Northern California as well, getting a return of some earthquake movement here across Lake Almanor uh, where we did see a 4.1 earthquake come in early this morning. Uh, looks like about, uh, well, 426 in the morning. That was followed up here by some aftershock activity, including some twos. Uh, it is in the vicinity of uh, last week's prior earthquake activity. I think it's been over a week now since we've seen that movement. But uh, let's see who felt it. See who was awake that uh, early in the morning there. Well, it looks like uh, some folks around Susanville, even maybe down into Chico, uh, reported feeling that earthquake uh, not super early in the morning but uh, let's see here where was it about 426 in the morning that's a little little early I don't get up that early but uh, sometimes it's nice to get up super early and enjoy the peace and quiet of the world before things get uh, running uh, either way, a little bit of activity ramping up here today across the Northern California region. This is, again, I have to go back the last 30 days to see all the movement uh, that we picked up here. About It's been about, I think about two weeks or so since we've seen uh, the five-pointer that kicked up here in the area of Canyon Dam. Uh, the main quake was a 5.5 listed here on the bottom. Uh, that was, of course, followed up here by a 5.2 and some uh, 4s and 3s as well. It's on a newly uh, discovered fault system up here underneath the lake. I did take a venture up there to see how close the water level was up to the Canyon Dam area. And I'm not 100% uh, certain how often they use this dam, but the water level was nowhere near um, anywhere close to this area. I looked fairly full across the region uh, as far as the rest of the lake goes, but uh, like I said, I don't know if this is only in extreme circumstances where they may utilize this dam, but uh, it was bone dry and um, well away from the dam uh, when I was up there. Uh, but either way, folks, a little bit of activity ramping up here, so we'll continue to watch the Northern California area. Uh, we have been seeing a little bit of trimmer uptick here across the area of Northern Cal. Let me bring this up. Uh, it's, this is day number two of Elevated Trimmer, which was, uh, this is yesterday's event. We'll see what tonight's uh, report brings us. But uh, roughly about 364 earthquake, well, trimmers down into the Cascadia subduction zone. Now that's adding strain a little bit further upstream here um, at the southern end of the Cascadia also at times when we see this type of event it does put pressure and strain up here on the north american plate uh, upstream uh, but i'm not 100 percent certain if uh, that activity there at lake almanor is associated with this i don't think so uh, but it could have a little effect in general uh, with the uh, pressure being applied here at the uh, crustal levels of the north american plate and of course that includes the lake almanor area somewhat shallow there about yeah, six to seven kilometers uh, in depth for that uh, earthquake activity today. Rest of California, looking at the map here, um, did have a 2.6 a little bit further down here into the 
San, well, just outside the San Bernardino mountain range. Uh, aside from that, mostly smaller microquakes, no major swarming taking place here across the area. Yellowstone National Park, it looks like uh, the USGS is putting a few of those earthquakes up there on the map. Uh, there's that 2.8 from last night. Uh, that was at about 1040. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview here real quick. And <clears throat> I think that's going to be this earthquake right about here. 2240, somewhere around here. I think that's going to be it. Looks like we had another smaller two as well, but it uh, looks like they're finally mentioning some of the earthquakes that were taking place there at Yellowstone. There's not a whole lot, but uh, there is uh, what looks like a little bit of a swarming event starting here around the Holmes Hill area of Yellowstone. We'll see uh, smaller microquakes, but again, as mentioned, a couple twos there uh, taking place across the rest of the country. Some movement across Texas and also Oklahoma area. Nothing major going on across the uh, New Madrid seismic zone. A uh, little bit of activity here in the West Canton area of North Carolina. Uh, looks like just to the north of this area. Had a 2.4 from yesterday, 2.2, and also a 1.8. Nothing further overnight, but still kind of watching this area. It is against the uh, uh, mountain ranges up here. Quite a few fault systems, some older ones at that. South America area, fairly quiet, uh, aside from that 3.0 coming in. Looks like we did have a um, 4.9 well underneath Bolivia, talking about 256 kilometers deep into the Peru Chile Trench. And uh, looks like a little bit of shallow or earthquake activity taking place here uh, downstream into the Chile region. Nothing major going on there yet. Uh, looks like the Kurokamachaka Trench over here had a little bit of activity as well. 4.5 not showing up on the USGS map continue to watch this area for some further large-scale movement uh, has been awfully quiet here in recent term in uh, uh, recent uh, months in certain areas of the Kuro Kamchaka Trench years uh, so kind of watching this area north of the Japan Trench for some possible larger scale activity um, aside from that looking at the rest of the map down here um, Still getting a pretty a pretty good clutter of movement across the Indonesia area, Banda Sea. Uh, but aside from that, uh, just some generally moderate uh, earthquake activity in the vicinity of the um, Pacific Ring of Fire. New Zealand looks awfully quiet. Uh, let's double check that real quick and see what's going on. Uh, 2.5 looks like about two hours ago we could could use uh, either map uh, we'll use this one for now um, 2.5 into the North Island area let me see it's kind of hard to tell I like to go across these uh, earthquake drums here just to kind of see what's going on and for the most part they all look super quiet um, not for sure what this is this could be some type of wind event i don't know it's only showing up specifically on this uh, seismograph station though maybe not wind but outside interference uh yeah but aside from that things look very quiet and of course um uh, timothy here does have a site to check out uh, for new zealand and the latest earthquake activity uh, in a pretty neat little setup Kind of goes through the uh, general overview of uh, earthquake activity here across New Zealand and of course some other items as well uh, listed up here. All right, uh, let's see what else we have. Nothing going on too much across the Java Trench. We did have some activity yesterday uh, across the uh, off the coast of northern Sumatra it looks like. Uh, but generally speaking, some smaller quakes here across the Java Trench, quiet across the Himalayas. Most of this activity, as seen on the globe, is from yesterday or late last night. 
Atlantic Ocean, quiet and clear. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye on things today. A little bit of bouncing back and forth here uh, between earthquake activity there in Japan and also the West Coast. Uh, the big island of Hawaii. Mostly, uh, looks like mostly smaller microquake activity. Quite a few twos kicking off. No major changes though to note across the uh, island of Hawaii. The latest uh, notification here from the USGS in regards to Kilauea Volcano. Uh, it doesn't look like they put one out today. Still got the former update from yesterday. Just kind of uh, talking about the uh, the earthquake swarms and the little heightened unrest that continues there across uh, the big island. But uh, currently not erupting. Space weather activity today uh, ramping up slightly with some solar flare activity here in the last hour or two peeking out into the sea flare category. I believe this is coming off of uh, some sunspot regions that we were chatting about last night, including uh, this one down here on the center disk of the sun. Also, looks like, um, oh, 30, what is that? 33, not 11, but 33, 14 over here. Looks like it may be exhibiting some signs of a little bit of heightened solar flaring activity. Uh, one of these, I believe it's this one. I don't think it's 3311. Let me see what we got here. It's the farthest sunspot. So 33... Uh, 13, I believe, right? 14, excuse me. <laughs> so many of them on here. Notice the, uh, these colors here getting... A little bit darker uh, individually, but also very close in proximity to one another, indicating a little bit of unstable um, conditions there across that sunspot. So continue to watch that one as it is currently flaring a little bit with some sea flare activity. Also down here, uh, this sunspot has grown drastically, it looks like, overnight uh, compared to this image that was put out... Uh, because overnight most recent image here shows a uh, quite a bit of growth within the structure of the sunspot <clears throat> so continue to watch these two regions uh, further around the bend there's not a whole lot of hopeful events uh, unless we get something new popping up uh, for now 99 percent chance of a c flare m flare at 35 x flare around five percent chance and it never fails every time i stand out in the rain uh, you know, to get a little cleansing. We had a little thunderstorm that blow through here last night. Actually, it was pretty large. And uh, just kind of stood out in the rain, and, you know, soaking up the uh, the, uh, the freshness of it. And uh, sure enough, it kind of, uh, I don't know, it does something to my, uh, my lungs. And it shouldn't. It should be fresh rainwater, right? You would think. We don't have any smoke in the air, but we did have... Yeah, we do get the smog on occasion, so could have probably not been the freshest rainwater I stood in, or at least enjoyed last night. It was kind of cool, though. It was definitely uh, a little surprised. All right, let's move on here. Looking at the enhanced weather conditions here across Texas, Oklahoma, or in uh, Texas and New Mexico. There we go. Tornado potential, about five percent chance there into the uh, southeastern New Mexico area with some wind and some hail event possibilities as well today, mainly in those regions. Tomorrow, uh, slight risk up into the, uh, uh, looks like Wyoming and portions of extreme Montana, southeastern Montana as well, getting in on uh, maybe a, a little bit of a tornado potential there, mostly hail and wind event for tomorrow. All right, folks, have yourself a great day. We're going to jump off here, and uh, we'll be back a little bit later on tonight with the Friday update. And, of course, we'll be uh, give a shout-out to our members. Haven't done it in a little while, so we'll get, get in there and make sure we recognize the channel members. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Take care, and stay safe out there.